Hello, thanks for joining me. A while back I had a project where I had to cut a whole bunch of C-clip grooves in the end of a shaft and they all had to be located in the same place. And to fix that problem, or to, to make that easier, uh, I made this uh, spindle stop. This goes into your uh, lathe spindle and expands and then there's a set screw in here that locks the, the shaft in this. Here, let me show you how it works. Put it in there and it just stops right there. So, uh, my original one had problems. Uh, this section here was too short and I had to open my guard to use it to get to that set screw. So, we're going to make one like this today with the set screw more accessible. Of course, every lathe is different. This one's got a uh, spindle that's slightly over three quarter inch, pretty small. But this is exactly the same as what we're going to build. Loosen the set screw. Allows you to take it out. Here's what we need to make this thing. I made the last one out of one inch stock. This is inch and a quarter here. Really doesn't matter. Uh, piece of, I think that's five eighths. Um, quarter inch rod, half half thirteen nut, and a set screw, quarter twenty set screw. Okay, I think the first step we'll work on the outside will be to uh, drill a half inch hole all the way through it. Okay, the next step is to make this piece, turn it down to this diameter right here. Now this is a good fit in my lathe. It's not a snug fit, but it's a good slip fit. It's probably five thousandths under, something like that. And it measures 777. Easy number to remember. So I'm going to turn that down to 777 or very slightly over maybe, uh, to about that distance right there. So it's not critical. Let's see. Okay, next step is to match this taper in here. Now originally, I just took a guess. Uh, I set the compound to give me a taper, uh, but it worked good. So I'm going to try to duplicate that same taper. Near as I can tell, that's 8%, or 8 degrees rather. So I set my compound at 8 degrees, and we'll run this in there and see if, see if it looks the same. Hmm, getting tighter. Needs to be slightly more than eight, I guess. Probably not that critical. That's it, I'm leaving that. Pretty close. Okay. What I'm going to do here is, is lock my carriage.
Okay, now I can use my compound to cut the tape. Hand feeding. Okay, let's see what we got. Looks like the taper is very slightly different, maybe a little bit steeper. But that'll work. Okay. Basically this piece is about done. Uh, I've got to drill a set screw in there and cut it off right here. Uh, remember I wanted to make this a little this section a little bit longer so I could leave the side cover of my lathe alone. So I'll cut it off right about there at the chuck level. Okay, that piece is basically done except for the set, set screw. Okay, next we're going to make, make this piece. And I need to make it a little bit longer because I made this section longer. So I cut a piece of 5 inch rod right there. Uh, first step will be to bore a quarter inch hole for the uh, stop rod through this. Okay, the next step is to cut cut it all but the tapered section down to one half inch. So I'm going to stick that much of it in the chuck and, and take the rest of it down to uh, Take all that down to half inch. Okay, about six thousandths more. I got a burr right there. That's the right size. Okay, now we got to cut the taper on that. I've left my compound the same way it, it was before. So there's no chance of any error here. All we got to do, make sure we got enough travel. Lock the, lock the carriage again. I don't like having my feet on with a locked carriage. Quieter too.
Okay. Ah, I cut my taper too uh, too deep here. I should have left it a little bigger. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make that look intentional. It was intentional, right? Ah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's why I intended it, right? <laughs> That'll work. Okay, the next step is to thread this section right here. I need the threads to stop about right in there. First I'm going to cut a slight undercut there for my to stop my thread going. This is actually a cut off and grooving tool. It's pretty useful for uh, doing just what I'm doing here. It cuts sideways. Uh, I think that's enough right there. Okay, to cut 13 threads per inch, I've got to change some gears here. And uh, if you're ever buying a lathe, unless you got all kinds of time and want to pull with this, get it with a quick change gearbox. This right here is a pain in the neck. It always takes me a while to do it. It takes me a while to figure out how to get it back to a basic feed rate. Uh, It's kind of a pain. Okay, I'm getting ready to thread here, and I've set my compound at 29 and a half. I've installed my threading tool here, and it's square to the work. A uh, machinist friend of mine uh, taught me a trick on how to make sure your, your cutting cutter is the right height. You do like this. Put a straight edge up against the work, and if, you, if, if it's the right height, that straight edge will be straight. If it's too low, like like that, it's leaning toward me. So perfectly vertical is the right. You're on center. So I'm ready to go there. Okay, I've got to slow things down a little bit. Put it in the back gear. Of course, you can thread at high speed if you got lightning reflexes. Let's see if that looks like 13 threads per inch. Looks like 13 threads per inch to me. Here goes.
I watched a video the other day of a guy cutting threads on YouTube. I can't remember where I saw it. He said to file the peaks off the threads before you try try them out. So it leaves little burrs on the top. It affects how the screws, the nut screws on. Yeah, it's not deep enough yet. I thought that was a pretty good idea. Yeah, it all fits together good now. All I lack is make, uh, making a washer for that or probably use a stock washer. Uh, cutting slots in that. And uh, putting a set screw in. The last one I made, wherever it is here. Yeah, I can't find it. But I used a uh, hacksaw to cut the slots. And I'm going to use a mill this time. Seem to work pretty good. Well, it made a nice clean slot. I don't know why it was so noisy. Looks like the saw is a little dull. Uh. It came with the mill when I bought it. I'll line up that slot right angle so it'll give me an even four, four tabs to expand. I hope that's deep enough because I had a feeling it was going to really be pushing that side or cut any deeper. I'm going to have to learn what I'm doing with saws. It may have just been a dull saw, uh, but obviously it was pretty hard on it. Looks like that'll work good. I'm going to stick it back in the lathe and clean that up a little bit. There it is. All I got to do is drill a set screw, hole for a set screw. And what I'll do is I'll drill through this into this, and then I'll take it apart and enlarge the hole in the center. En enlarge the hole going through that. I believe it's going to work out good.
Damn. It moved. Shit. Okay, I had to take it over to the vise and drive that out. Uh, no, no big deal. I already had the tap started. So it's going straight. I can just finish it up by hand. There we go. I'll have to deburr everything, but there's there's my set screw hole. There's the aligning hole. And that's the one I'm going to have to enlarge quite a bit. Because this has got a slide inside this with that set screw aligned. Uh, I'm guessing I'll, I'll probably a half inch shaft. I'll probably make it uh, at least a quarter inch, maybe a little more. Of course, the hole going through it this way is only a quarter inch, so I can't go too far. Okay, let's give it a try here. Quarter 20 set screw with a flat tip. It doesn't need to be the cup cup tip. It'll eat into the shaft. Goes on there. Washer. I ran that through there until I could see the tip of the set screw in the hole there. That keeps everything aligned. Now this goes in here, hopefully. And that's, I may need to ream that again. But it's ready to try in the headstock. You know, lo lock that down, and that'll lock this piece into the headstock, and then, uh, Lock, uh, lock the set screw down to set your depth. Let's go try it. Okay, one thing I could have done, and uh, but I didn't have any, was make that out of hex stock. That would allow you to hold that while you tighten this. But so far, what I've been able to do with the other one I made, is stick that out, Allen, in there. Hopefully this works. Uh oh. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? Ah, I think I need to undercut that taper right there so that it pushes out on the top part. Right now it's trying to push out at the bottom of my saw cuts. I don't remember having that trouble before. We'll fix that. Well, now I remember having this problem last when I made the other one. The hole needed to be elongated so that when you tightened it and the, the hole size I put in there was quarter inch which was inadequate. Okay, well there it is. It's all done. Uh, let's review what I've done here. Uh,
I relieved that cone a little bit more. Probably wasn't necessary. I think it was probably the, the uh, set screw stopping it. So then I milled out the set screw slot uh, with a 5 16 end mill. It's a quarter inch uh, set screw. And that gives you plenty of clearance there. And it's still plenty strong. And then, right here, I cut those saw cuts down a little more with a hacksaw. Uh, kind of hated to make a mess of it like that, but it's functional. It works good. Uh, line those holes up like that. Run the set screw down until it touches the shaft. Back it off a little bit. Put that in there. Stick the hex key in there, like that. And lock it down. That's, that's locked in there good. In fact, uh, it'll turn my spindles. Then, whenever you got your depth set right, lock your Allen, hex key, whatever. And that shaft won't move. And you want to take it out, take your rod out, run the nut out to the end, tap it, it releases it. I, I've used this thing a bunch of times, usually for making repetitive shaft lengths and I'm finishing the ends of them or or grooves, repetitive uh, keyway slots, or, or not keyway, but uh, snap ring grooves, things like that. Locked in there good. Probably make those threads a little shorter. There you go. Well, that'll do it. Uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, be sure and subscribe. I'll have a lot more videos coming up.